So how am I doing that? That's pretty neat, but how does it work? So what I'm doing is I'm using a DAW and I'm using MIDI to send notes into that DAW and I'm applying virtual instruments to those sounds. So what on earth does that mean? Well, let's try to explain it. Many people think that MIDI is the old synthy sounding stuff they heard in old video games, but this is actually not correct. MIDI is not sound, it is musical data. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. In the early 1980s, a number of music technology companies collaborated to develop a universal language for the communication of musical information between computers and instruments or other music-related hardware. This digital music language can detect, record, or transfer many kinds of musical activity, including what note you play, how hard you play it, when the note starts, which is attack, how long you hold it down, which is the sustain, and when it ends, which is the release. It can also uh, capture pedal information or curve-based information like uh, a mod or a pitch wheel, which is curve-based data. And it can also capture many other types of information like buttons or knobs or slider data. I'll explain the implications and applications of this in a minute. But MIDI is the digital language I use to communicate the notes I play on my keyboard to my computer. When I play C, D, E on my keyboard, that signal is sent to my computer almost instantaneously. And I can apply that MIDI information that comes in from my keyboard that's connected to my computer. I can apply virtual instrument sounds to that. DAW, or D-A-W, stands for Digital Audio Workstation. The name can be a little confusing because it doesn't actually refer to hardware or your physical studio workstation, but to the master software program for recording, editing, and manipulating audio. It can also handle dozens or even hundreds of tracks at a time. Cubase, Logic, Digital Performer, and Pro Tools are popular options. However, DAWs today also have robust tools for receiving, manipulating, and editing MIDI information, which is displayed in your DAW like this. This is called the MIDI Roll View. And if you've ever seen the old player piano rolls or music box spindles with all their little dots and dashes of musical notes, this is very similar in principle and function. Your DAW is also a host software for plugins, which are other smaller pieces of software that plug into your DAW. Plugin software includes things like virtual instruments and effects like reverb and delay. Most DAWs today also have some musical notation functionality, but these are typically not their strengths and are unused by most. I will speak about notation more a little bit later. Now, here's where things get cool. You can use a piano keyboard, actually any kind of MIDI compatible instrument, to input MIDI information and send it via a MIDI cable or USB cable into your computer, where it is recognized by your DAW. There you can apply virtual instrument sounds to those incoming MIDI notes in real time. There's actually a slight delay, but this can be minimized to be unnoticeable. The result being, when you play on your digital keyboard, you hear back the virtual instrument sound that you have loaded in your DAW, like this. Like I mentioned, MIDI can transfer not only information about the notes, but you can use a wheel or a joystick, in my case, I have a joystick, to send curves of information to control the pitch, volume, or expression of an instrument while you play the notes. Let me demonstrate for a moment. The result of this is that you can create compelling performances with any virtual instruments you have on your computer. So here we've got a full strings patch. Let's just hold this down. I'll hold it down with the pedal for a second and you can hear what I'm doing. Uh, I've 
I've got various things. I've got um, like some high, some high strings. Playing a spiccato. Uh, I, I can I can do pretty much anything I want. I've let's see. I've got a piano here. I can uh, get a woodwind instrument like a flute. Clarinet. I can even um, break open a choir. I've got percussion, timpani. And really any instrument you can imagine can be purchased, can be accessed, and you can use to make creative, powerful, compelling music. But MIDI input can also be recorded into your DAW like this. And I can open this up and you can even edit many aspects of this MIDI, okay? so. If you take a look here, I can see every note that I just played. If I want, I can change how loud a note is. I can change when the note starts. I can change when the note releases. I can even move the note all around if I like. So as you can see, this gives you quite a lot of control when it comes to manipulating the instruments. And you can even edit every aspect of the recorded MIDI performance using advanced editing tools that are pretty much universal for all of the main DAWs these days. If you want, you can even copy and paste this performance to other tracks or apply a different instrument to the MIDI that you just recorded. So I'm going to give this to a harp and we'll hear what that sounds like. The broad term virtual instruments refers to any instruments that are run or performed virtually on computers. Subsets of virtual instruments would include sampled instruments, software synthesizers, as opposed to hardware synths, and modeled instruments. The sampling approach consists of recording, with microphones, isolated musical moments or elements that can be accessed later as a component of your composition. Usually what happens is that an accomplished musician, let's say a violinist, is brought into a room for recording and is mic'd as if this was going to be a regular recorded performance for an album or something. But instead of recording an entire performance, the individual notes will be recorded as fragments. G will be recorded individually, then G sharp, then A, and so on until the entire range of the instrument has been captured on a note-by-note -note basis. After recording, these notes can be mapped to their respective pitches on the keyboards. So when you play C, D, E on the keyboard, what you hear back in real time is those real violin notes recorded in a real room with real microphones. The challenge with this approach is that while the sound is real, the virtual performance can sound very artificial and stale because the way you create the performance cannot or does not always mimic how the real instrument does. For example, violins don't create a da 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 sound when you play C, D, E, unless they're playing staccato, dun dun dun. There is a flow and a fluidity to the phrase. But gratefully, my explanation of the sampling process is very primitive and a little bit simplistic. Over the last 20 or so years, sampling techniques have become very thorough and advanced so as to capture many levels of nuance in their articulations, dynamics, and behavior of the instruments. In order to offer the composer the ability to perform these instruments as expressively as possible. 
So if you know what you are doing as a virtual instrument performer, you can create some very expressive and realistic sounding music with virtual instruments. In fact, using sample based instruments within a MIDI based approach is currently the best way to create realistic sounding orchestral music without actually recording a live orchestra performance. Most orchestral virtual instruments are created using this approach because it captures the most realism in the sound. Software synthesizers like Omnisphere, Zebra, and Massive generate synthetic artificial sounds using oscillators and a number of controllable parameters for customizing the sounds. While there are synthesizers like Omnisphere, they will occasionally use audio samples as a sound source, the strength of synthesizers is not in accurately replicating acoustic instruments, but in creating new sounds, textures, and soundscapes. There are some orchestral virtual instruments that use a technique called sample modeling. This is really a type of synthesis because the audio waveforms are not recorded but carefully modeled to artificially generate sound the same way that real instrument does. I do not use any of these instruments myself at the moment, but they can sound very compelling and some people swear by them for some things. I think that sample modeling technology has a very bright and or at least interesting future, but the instruments created with this approach are still used by a minority of orchestral composers who can create on the computer. As you can see, composing on a DAW with MIDI and virtual instruments offers a huge amount of potential for creating expressive music. You can control many fine details of the performance with relative ease. There are pieces of software that feature a notation sheet music based approach like Finale, Sibelius, and Dorico. These options are better if you are comfortable working with notation and are creating music to print out and give to live musicians. But if you plan to create finished, expressive orchestral music yourself, you will find that a MIDI editing based approach in a DAW offers you more controls for shaping the performance, thus allowing for greater realism in the final product. It is also more accessible and intuitive for those who are less comfortable with reading notes. So I will not be discussing the notation route during this course. However, if you are working inside a notation based option, I would recommend that you check out Note Performer, an artificial intelligence based playback engine for musical notation. It comes with a full orchestral library of sounds and automatically phrases and performs the music in a really surprisingly realistic fashion. And I think it currently retails for around $130. Later in this course, I will be covering performance techniques for getting the most realism out of your sampled instruments.